Hi again. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been with you on our um, version of Coffee in the Word. Um, this afternoon, as I'm recording, whenever you may be watching, it's not my Coffee in the Word. It's a cheap um, advertisement, but this is my other beverage of choice at times, my uh, Mountain Dew Zero. Um, that being said, like anything else, you know, everyone's choice, whether it be coffee, whether it be tea, whether it be caffeinated, whether it be decaf, whether it be water, whether it be, you know, Kool-Aid, is doesn't really matter. And our discussion today is about spiritual gifts and using your spiritual gifts. So when we talk about your choice of beverages, there are many different choices. Now, the thing with spiritual gifts is we don't get to choose them. Um, however, there are many different gifts just as there are many different beverages to enjoy while you spend time with God and the Word. So my scripture that I'm going to read is kind of lengthy, but I'm going to go ahead and read through all of it. And it is out of 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 31. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, um, and I am reading from um, the NIV. Um now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. And I believe some trans translations use the word ignorant in that. So, uninformed, uneducated. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he determined, or he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason to stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, the, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment but god has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have the equal concern for each other if one part suffers every part suffers with it if one part is honored every part rejoices with it now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Now, that was a lengthy passage. So, again, 1 Corinthians 12, um, the entire chapter, um, 
for you to go back and dive in a little deeper should you choose. Um, but I couldn't just pick a couple of verses because while it talked about the gifts, then it talked about the body being part of the church. And in using our gifts, they're all needed to be part of God's church and to be part of his ministry and part of his outreach. Um, for example, if no one emptied the trash, the church building would start to stink and draw bugs. Um, however, nobody thinks about taking out the trash until it starts to stink. Does that mean it's any less important than the Sunday school teacher? Absolutely not. It, the Bible just said we're all important and we're all necessary. I'm going to list a couple. Um, there's a table. Um, my, the Bible that I use is a women's study Bible. And there is a study and it gives different references um, of different types of spiritual gifts. And I'm just going to kind of name them because they're a little more common language than some of the scripture. Prophecy, serving or ministry helps, teaching, exhortation or the ability to inspire and persuade, giving, leading or administration, mercy, wisdom, knowledge, faith, discernment, the ability to determine good or evil and see beyond the, sur the surface, evangelism, hospitality, that's a big one, and speaking. Um, so those are kind of an example of some of the things that we see throughout the church in different areas. Um, but here's the thing. God gives them all. He's giving us all at least one. And we need to use those to further God's kingdom. Um, as the parts of the body are not all the same, we don't all have the same spiritual gifts. We wouldn't work very well if everybody had the same gifts. We would be missing some important parts. And we wouldn't know it until we started to stink. So, as I leave you today, um, I encourage you to go back and read this scripture and take it in pieces and spend some time in prayer, spend some time thinking, um, waiting for God to speak, as was my last coffee in the word was about God speaking. But I would like for us all to pray that God will reveal what our gift or gifts are and that he will reveal to us how that we need to use it and where that we need to use it. And if you feel like you're being you think, well, God's calling me to teach a class and I don't have the ability. Remember this. If God is calling you, he is enabling you and you have the ability. But sometimes you have to have the faith that says, God, I don't know, but I trust you. You want me to do this and I know you'll be with me. So I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. God asks us to be willing and have some faith and step out. Um, some of your gifts are obvious. Some may not be. Sometimes we kind of squash those gifts because we don't want to do those things. Um, so spend some time. Then remember, a little flashback, to be still and wait for God to speak. Um, and I encourage you to search for those spiritual gifts. And I look forward to seeing how you use those spiritual gifts and to see what God is going to do with all of us using our spiritual gifts so that we are a complete functional body of Christ as the church and that we blossom, we grow, and most importantly, we don't start stinking because somebody's not doing their part. Now, um, I'm going to leave it at that today. Sometimes I get a little wordy and a little off track, and I've tried to keep this one because it was so much scripture and there's a lot of good stuff in there. And I don't feel that I have that ability to go through it in depth for an in-depth teaching lesson. And that this isn't the part for that. This isn't the place. Um, this is a, a time for me to share with you what God put on my heart. Um, and I will spend some time um, searching because sometimes I think I overshadow some of the things that I think are gifts that maybe aren't. And uh, maybe I need to spend some time in soul searching and in prayer to God so that I don't start stinking. Then again, I ask you, if you feel like, hmm, there's starting to be a stink, you know, a little Christian uh, friendly, hey, you know, maybe maybe you need to, maybe you need to go back and re review that a little bit. I think you're missing something. And again, we approach each, each other and one another in love when we do that. But uh, I can't leave and can't do anything much without a little, little tidbit of humor in there. Um, 
but the important part is we need to seek what our gifts are. We need to use those for God. And uh, I encourage you to do so. I want to close today with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the scripture that tells us about the gifts that you give us and how you equip us. And the, also the scripture that says all gifts are important because they're all part of the body. All parts of the body are necessary because you formed our human bodies. And what a better illustration to use as far as the, the body of the church as the human body. We need everyone and we need everybody to use their gifts and we need everybody working together because that's how we are the best example of your love in the world around us and our world needs it very badly in this time. So I ask that you be with those who are listening and help them and encourage them. Let them hear you speak to them on revealing their gifts and where and how to use them. And I ask all this in your name. Amen. And have a great day.